Welcome to Tuesday's at the Table Conversation. My name is Jacob Dharmaraj. I'm a member of the Connectional Table. The topic for today's discussion is, what is the role of Bible in our lives? We are delighted to have Dr. Kabamba Kiboko, a biblical scholar and a member of the Judicial Council as our guest. As we begin this conversation, I'm going to ask Dr. Kiboko to say a few words about herself. Dr. Kiboko, would you please tell us a little bit about yourself, the context in which you do your ministry, and what brings you to this conversation? Thank you very much, Dr. Dharmaraj. I'm blessed to be in your presence. I am as you said, Kabamba Kiboko, and originally from the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, um, married and mother. I am Musanga, meaning that I was born into the Basanga people, and our language is Kisanga. I studied at, Berkeley, at the Institut Superior of the, the Theology in Mulungwishi in South Congo, at Drake University in Des Moines, Iowa, Perkins School of Theology, and Alif DU Joint PhD. The, co the context in which I do ministry is really interesting. I am in my ninth year at Forest Chapel United Methodist Church, a congregation that has moved from a monocultural to a multicultural, multilingual, multi-ethnic congregation with two services, one in English and the other in Nepali with some English. So the one in English, one hour only. The other one is two hours and 30 minutes. So I was invited, I'm here in this conversation because I was invited by the General Secretary of the Board of Higher Education, the Reverend Greg um, Berquist. So I am here. And as you said, a member of the Judicial Council, and I will, talk, I will not talk about anything related to the Judicial Council. I'm here just like a pastor. Thank you, that is extremely helpful. Thank we you. Are, we are here to talk about how United Methodists understand scripture. Mm -hmm. The Bible is our primary source for theological inquiry. The Articles of Religion of the United Methodist Church state that the Holy Scripture contains all things necessary and sufficient unto salvation. John Wesley called the early Methodists to search the scriptures. I would like to begin with a question. What is the Bible? How do we understand the essential teachings of the Bible? That is a great question. What is the Bible? We all know about the Bible. We all know that it is a library. It has 66 books. Is that why we're asking this question? Um, before I even knew to ask, the question of what the Bible is, what it was, I experienced what grace, um, it, that the grace of God in a form of deliverance. The Bible then to me became had a meaning because I tell you, Dr. Dharmaraj, I went to disturb those who were praying. I was not what I would call myself as a Christian. 
I went to disturb, but something happened to me. God disturbed me. I experienced deliverance. It was then that I started reading this Bible. And when I read it, I saw these narratives about deliverance, demons being cast out, and really my experience Med said, I understood it now in light of the Bible. So for me, the Bible is living word. Bible is a foundation of who I am, foundation of everything. So that is what the Bible is. How do we understand the essential truth of the Bible? With just our mind, you see, I started seeking, digging, trying to understand what the Bible is, what this thing, trying to understand what happened to me. So that's why I went to these degrees, 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 pining them up, up and I, PhD. <laughs> um, the Holy Spirit helps us understand the essential truth of the Bible. So what is the Bible? The Bible is my GPS, if I may use that. Shows me direction, even as complicated as it may be. That is what the Bible is to me. What is the Bible to United Methodists? Well, it is answered that the Bible has everything that we need. All the essentials are in the Bible. So it's our foundation. Thank you. Yes. We know that the Bible was not written in languages we speak today. The Old Testament was written in ancient Hebrew mm -hmm. and the New Testament in an earlier form of Greek. How does vernacular translation affect how we read and understand the Bible? And how did the Bible translation help to bring about a historic shift in Christianity's theological center of gravity from the global north to global south by forging a strategic alliance with local conceptions of religion and culture. Thank you for that long, beautiful, very <laughs> loaded question. Yes, there are, um, we know the Bible was written in languages. It was not written in languages we speak to get today. No, we don't speak Hebrew. We don't speak Aramaic. We don't speak Greek. We speak Kisanga. So we have Bible translated in Kisanga and the title of that Bible in my language back then it was Mukanda Waluafio, which means a complicated letter. All right. How do we even read this? How does vernacular translation affect how we read and understand the Bible? Well, let me say this. There are certain places where translations are less clear than others. Those are few. For the majority of scripture, we have enough textual criticism, enough resource in the tradition of the church and Jewish uh, tradition to understand pretty clearly what the Bible is saying. Vernacular translation really 
helps because it helped me when I didn't even know the Hebrew or Greek, uh, be able to read uh, these uh, languages, I was able to understand because I surrendered. When you surrender, you'll be able to understand. How did the Bible translation help to bring about a historic shift in uh, Christianity's theology, theological center of gravity from the global north to global south by pioneering a strategic alliance with local conceptions of religion and culture? Who? That was the question. <laughs> Part B of the question. Here's how I'm going to answer this question. I'm going to just use, say what Philip Jenkins says in his article, Believing in the Global uh, South. He writes this, Christianity, a religion that was born in Africa and Asia, has in our lifetimes decided to go home. Our traditional concept of the Christian world as a predominantly white and Euro-American world of Western Christianity, in fact, is no longer the norm. So it's just coming back home. I hope this is helpful. Thank you, thank you. We know religion does not inherently speak for itself because um, no scripture, no book, no piece of writing has its own voice. As a biblical scholar, you know that human interpretation is everything. Therefore, we need to take every effort to clarify the meaning we intend to give to certain thoughts and actions. When we read and interpret scripture, how do we remain faithful to the text itself and apply it appropriately to our time and our cultures, cultures which are so different from the time and place in which the Bible was written? As a biblical scholar, as you said, human interpretation is everything. Gosh, yes, yes, yes. It's a language that you learn, and then you are you learning this language, academic language, in order to even understand, you see, understand what happened to me when I went to disturb those who were praying. What happened to me? And I find myself in the academic circle where I'm trying to understand the language that is not used in the academic circle. It's like there is a dissonance, but there is not a dissonance. Human interpretation is not everything. But that's what I learned in the academic circle. Human interpretation is everything. But the school where I went to, what is that school that I'm talking about? Where I went to disturb those who were praying. What happened to me when I was hit so hard and was able, I said to my heart, I said, God, if this is you, open my mouth, I will confess. And my mouth, Dr. Dharmaraj, my mouth was open. I experienced as if there were a boulder that fell off my chest and I was able to breathe. So when I found myself, even as a Bible, as complicated as it is, and this is my book based on the, my dissertation, Divining the Woman of Endor, African Culture, 
post-colonial hermeneutic and the politics of biblical translation. We suffered with that politics, okay? It is for real. It is for real. But human interpretation is not everything. You interpret these sacred uh, text, interpret this with an openness to the Holy Spirit. And as I'm speaking, I even pray, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me as I am in this conversation about the role of the scripture, the Bible in um, our lives. So therefore we need to take every effort to clarify the meaning we intend to give to certain thought and actions that is gutsy. We think we assign meaning just ourselves. I know how to do this. Just read this book. I know how to do this because you will see how what I learned, how to dissect, deconstruct, and all of that. But you had to write some stuff because. That's how it is in that area, that language, and you get your PhD, then you come back to who you are and the purpose, your purpose, why God placed you on earth. Why that experience? What is God telling you? So when we read and interpret scripture, how do we remain faithful to the text itself and apply it appropriately, appropriately to our time culture, which is different from the time and place in which the Bible was written? Who? Remember Dr. Ram, uh, Dharmaraj, what I just said, what happened to me? I didn't know anything about somebody by the name of John Wesley, a white male. It's later on, as I'm reading, a white male had an experience similar to what I had. Different culture, different time, 18th century guy. And this woman, a Musanga, had an experience in the Lord. I'm telling you, when we experience the Holy Spirit, it transcends our cultural boundaries. Thank you. Thank you. There is a reasonable opinion among many that scriptures, religious traditions, and beliefs are no longer relevant. Is there room for disagreement in faithfully trying to understand the Bible today? Oh, wow. Um, there is a respectable opinion among many that scriptures and religious traditions and beliefs are no longer relevant. That is a revelation that is where we get to the point that we surrender that uh, the Bible is no longer um, uh, the foundation. Uh, the, that's where we really admit that we have lost our identity as Christ followers because the Bible is irrelevant and uh, religious uh, traditions are irrelevant. So, why do we even have to take time to disagree on what we don't believe in? So if we just say this doesn't count anymore, it is no longer relevant. We don't need room. We don't need room for disagreement in faithful, trying to understand the Bible. How can we understand the Bible that we think is irrelevant? So we cannot even try to understand it because it is irrelevant. But in the context where I am serving, my God, this book continues to help us 
we are a global, local, global church. We have people all around the globe uh, communicating with us and upholding this book with its complications, but it contains the word of God. It has power to transform our lives and we sing it. Are there differences in how we understand the Bible based on our cultural context, as you said? Because there is so much emphasis today that uh, context, intercontext and multi-context matter? Again, as I said, this white male in England in, during the 18th century, something happened to him. And this woman, a Musanga, something happened to her that is so similar to this guy who is white and I'm black. <laughs> I'm telling you, differences, our differences, when we surrender to God, when the Holy Spirit is in our midst to lead us, Peter, we the Peters will be able to see that sheet coming from above with all these different animals. And we sing, I can't eat that. And God says, <laughs> what I call clean, you cannot call unclean. In the United Methodist uh, Book of Disciplines, uh, our theological task states, that United Methodists share with other Christians the conviction that Christian scripture is the primary source and criterion for Christian doctrine. Mm -hmm. It also states, while we acknowledge the primacy of scripture in theological reflection, our attempts to grasp the meaning always involve tradition, experience, and reason. Can you speak to how you understand these two statements together and how mm -hmm. they influence how we read the scripture as United Methodists? Mm -hmm. If we still are going to read the scripture as United Methodists, if we are going to see that the scripture, the Bible is relevant, not no longer relevant. If we see that it is still, it is relevant to us now, we will see scriptures as sufficient. We will see that it is the primary source and criterion for Christian doctrine. We will see it and we will see tradition as serving us to understand the Bible, serving the Bible, the scripture. We will see experience not as tramping uh, the, 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 the scripture, but as being, as helping us understand scripture. I had that experience in the Lord. When I started reading the Bible, I saw it was in alignment with the teaching uh, of Jesus Christ. And uh, reason also helps us, serving us to understand what holds us together, the foundation, the Bible. So that's what I say. They are in service to the Bible, to the scripture. You said that in closing, uh, I have the simple question. We are a global church. We are a connectional church. 
if you are a member of uh, the local United Methodist Church, your feet are in the local church and your wings are in the global church. We are looking forward to our upcoming general conference. And as a denomination, we are facing a lot of challenges. In closing, would you please you know, give your take on, do we stay or do we go? Wow, that's a good question. Do we stay or do we go? The Spirit of God will lead us. I invite us, beloved in Jesus Christ, the people called Methodists, do not be a sect without power. But listen to the Holy Spirit who is living with us, dwelling with us. The Holy Spirit provide guidance. Let us surrender. That is the word, surrender. Let go and let God. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Kiboko. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.